All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, we are actually live in full effect. And we got a Texas hit right here on the line. We got the one and only Lady Lunatic. How are you doing this evening? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. I got to say, you are most certainly welcome. I hope everything is all well with your end out there in Texas. I'm actually seeing that you guys are actually getting back to doing shows and actually getting back to normal life. I got to say, looking... Looking at all those news reports, seeing the good news is making me jealous down here in Canada. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys have some snow down there, right? Well, up there. <laughs> oh yeah, we got we got tons of snow. We actually just got about fifty centimeters. So that's probably roughly about forty something inches. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a treat. You, I gotta say, once you're when, once you lived here for a while, you pretty well get used to it, though. Right, right. It's it's it becomes the norm. But I know you're a busy individual, lady, so I'm gonna dive right into this broadcast. But I gotta take you back to the beginning of your amazing career this far, and I have to ask, what actually made you decide to pursue a career in the music industry initially? I've always been a music lover. I grew up on music. It was played, you know, around the house um, every day, my mom and my dad. So I grew up listening to different genres, too. It was like Motown. It was what they call soft rock. Um, It was the blues. So I've always been a music lover. And I would write poetry. So that's how I actually, you know, jumped into the idea of becoming a rapper. I started out writing poetry. And also as well, in the late 1990s, you actually became a member of the San Antonio-based hip-hop group titled Southern Merchandise. I was wondering, what is the story behind this phenomenal group? And of course, how did yourself and the other members originally get connected? Um, okay, so Southern Merchandise, uh, the, the two CEOs, one of them, we actually grew up together. We were from the same neighborhood. And the other CEO, because um, we were from the west side, and they were from the west side, but it was just a different west side. So they both brought everyone together to try to bring both different sides of the west side together. Um, you know, it's like a peaceful thing, you know, so everybody could get along. But the, the crazy thing about it is that everyone knew each other. And we all grew up together, and a lot of us were even relatives. So it was it was simple to bring everyone aboard, because it was just that, you know, everyone had talent, but there was no one, you know, who was willing to put any of us out. So that's when they stepped in, and, and they were like, hey, um, well, you know, my own girl that I've been knowing forever, she rapped. And then he was like, well, man, you know, my little cousin, he rapped. And then after that, it was kind of like a ripple effect. We would bring in people that we knew. So it, it was more like a family thing. Um, and it, it, happened, it, it happened fast. And um, it was a beautiful thing. <laughs> it really was. And also as well, in the year 1998, you guys actually released, the, in my personal opinion, the iconic project titled Still in the Game, that actually featured tons of amazing songs. I was wondering if you can actually break down the story of this iconic of, of this iconic album, and of course, is it still actually out there to be streamed or purchased today? Um. Okay. Sitting, well, before sending the game, we did Southern Stress, and uh, we did Southern Stress, and we actually we got a record deal when we did Southern Stress, and Southern Stress was just. Basically, everyone that was on a label, and um, we got a record deal from that, but the company that we got a record deal from, they ended up going bankrupt. So when we did Still in the Game, it was kind of like just to show people that we hadn't stopped, and, you know, we were still out there, we were still making music and everything. So, you know... We wanted to reach out to other people who weren't uh, directly on our, on our label, but people that we knew who rapped, who had a gift, 
and who wanted to like get on a song that can be featured and get their name out there because a lot of the artists that were on there are artists like you know they didn't have a deal they just wanted to get their name out there and be recognized for their gift so we could be in the studio recording a song and people knew at that time and shout out to to skip 17 freeze because we would be at his studio and we would be recording people would know and they would just come in there hey can i you know jump on a song and if they were good we would absolutely let them jump on a song so like the way that that album happened um it, it was golden it, it was golden to get so many different you know rappers on there like that and again it was all love and I got to say, my personal favorite joint off that project is actually Take Care of Your Own. I got to say, yourself, Bud, and K-9 had such phenomenal chemistry on that particular song. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That is one of my uh, favorite songs, too. Um, K-9 is actually my cousin. And uh, Buddy is actually related to Homer, which was one of the CEOs of Rest in Heaven, Homer, he passed away. Uh, Buddy was actually um, his cousin. And us three would be together all of the time with Homer. That's probably why that chemistry was like that, is because we were always together all of the time. But that song, um, that song came about, um, at the time it was, it was a, a little bit of friction, a little bit of friction among us. And, you know, they always told me that I was the meanest one. I was the only female. <laughs> they always told me that I was the meanest one and they always called me mean. And so I came up with that concept because I was like, okay, even if y'all make me mad or whatever, y'all are still my brothers. Y'all are still my family, and I, I still love y'all. And so I came up with the concept of that, and when I did, I was like, hey, k not I want you to hear it. And he was like, man, I love it. You're still mean, but, <laughs> but I love the song. <laughs> That's why it's one of my favorite songs, too. And also as well, uh, just two years later in the year 2000, you actually had the opportunity to work with a fellow based hip -hop, uh, Texas hip hop group, the Illegal Amigos on the album Texas Cali Connection. I was wondering, how did you originally get connected with the Illegal Amigos? And of course, what was it like just being in the studio working with those phenomenal individuals? That was through, again, that was through Homer. Um, anybody who wanted to, to do a feature or anything like that with me, it, they all went through him. And everybody that I met, it, it was a pleasure and it was an honor, you know, just to, to be in the presence of any of those guys. And um, especially being a female, especially back then, because it, it's different now. You know, back then, like, you really had to come with lyrics and bars. And you had to show and prove, but um, it, it was a pleasure. And before I, you know, do anything, it, I'm always nervous before I do anything because, you know, people have heard of you and they've heard your music, so it's like, man, I don't want to let anybody down. <laughs> I've got to get in here and i got to go hard. i got to represent. But I felt right at home. They made me feel comfortable and I felt right at home. And when you actually said back in the day you had to come with bars, I I I I, I miss those days honestly because nowadays even with this mainstream stuff, individuals is almost it's almost like the music industry is reversed. If you come with bars, right. no one's gonna pay attention. But if you spit the three same words over and over again for three straight minutes, they're gonna pay attention. I, I don't know if it's short attention spans or if it's yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's almost like the music industry has like reset and went went in, went in reverse. Yes, yes, absolutely, it is. Uh, and I miss those days, too. I really do. Um, I, I'm sorry. You asked me if Still in the Game is still out there and if it can't be streamed. It's not, but we are working on putting it back out there. Uh, 
Uh, we it's one of the albums that that one and Southern Stress. A lot of people ask us about those albums, so um, um, we have to put those back out there. They're hidden gems. And also, speaking of another hidden gem, in the year 2002, you actually released a classic album uh, titled Set and Shit Straight, is where I actually first discovered you at you as an MC. And I was always wondering, what is the story behind this iconic debut solo album of yours? And of course, is that one still available out there? Because I remember I had a CD copy back in the day, but, you know, through so many moves, I am wow. lost my copy. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Sense is straight. Well, um, you know, there's always, when you have a big, a big family, you know, uh, there's always going to be, you know, some kind of disagreements and everything. We had multiple disagreements within the family. And so, um, we had, you know, a couple of people that left and, I was the, as they like to say, I was the last man standing. Uh, you know, I, I'm loyal to a fault. So they felt like, okay, you should get the solo album. So my album was the first solo album to come off of the label. And um, I'm not going to, I ain't going to even lie, like, I was nervous about it. I was like, are y'all sure? No, we're sure. It was, it was Homer and it was KB, the two CEOs. Uh, we're sure, you know, that's the best move. So we jumped in head first with that album. And that album I'm actually going to make available next month because a lot of people have been asking me for that. Piff, when, when are we going to, you know, put that album back out? With, because we can't find it anywhere. So I'm going to make it available next month on all the digital outlets. And I also saw as well that actually on Discogs, that album right now is actually selling for $8,000 <laughs> plus $1,500 shipping actually out in Japan. So that's in Japan money. So I, I, someone, someone is definitely hustling with that with that album out there. Yeah. Yes, they are. They, they are. Um, I first got wind of that like some years ago, and I, I didn't believe it. I, and they had to show me, and I was like, "Oh my God, are you serious?" I, yeah, I, that is, it's mind blowing. It, it's mind blowing, and you can't, you know, you can try to, you know, get it taken down everywhere, but it's that's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. But the 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 positive thing about that, it, it kept my name out there. And I actually have some fans from Japan on my Facebook and Instagram due to seeing that album. But the fact that it's selling for $8,000 is mind-blowing to me. That's crazy. And you say it's shipping and handling is 15 $1,500, bucks, which I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. To me, me personally, that's as greedy. You know, you got the $8,000, <laughs> but you also want 1500 shipping. That's, that, that's, just, that's just like, that's, like, that's what you call... Hustling right over the top. Yes, that is that, that is the gradient. <laughs> you have the eight grand. Why do you have to charge fifteen hundred for shipping and handling? <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy. I'm just gonna say, if someone's gonna buy that album for that much shipping, you best get worldwide overnight shipping. Like I expect that shit at my door the next day. I don't care where I am, and I don't care where you yeah. are. I want that the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I expect you to put it in my hand. <laughs> also, gift wrap that shit as well for that price. Gift wrap it as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. But also as well, you actually have a song out uh, titled Purse Full of Stones featuring the late, great Pimp C that actually was on the production. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a bit more about, about this phenomenal song. And of course, can you tell us a bit more about Pimp C for the individuals that might not, might not know very much about him? Okay, Pimp C, the late, great Pimp C um, from UGK. Um, Texas Legends. 
from Port Arthur, Texas. Um, we grew up on Pimp C and Bun B. And as a matter of fact, you know, Bun B is still out there doing his thing, and, and Pimp C is, uh, he lives on. Uh, we grew up off of UGK. You know, they spoke our language. Um, we related to them. Everything that they were talking about, it was everything that we were going through. And it just so happened that um, my my business partner, Mr. Jose, and his label mate, Little Finn, they were they were in a, um they had a a group and um their company was called Boulevard Records, and the CEO was Bear. So Finn actually did a whole album with UGK. And when I came out with Purse Full of Stones, they thought it would be a good idea to put Pimp on the song and to use the production. That, you know, the production was Pimp. So I, I was like, oh, my God, like, that was a blessing because that has taken off. It, it sounds so good. And just the fact that, okay, I redid the song, you know, before the idea even came along to put him on there. Because it's the original version with just me on the song. But then, you know, they came up with the idea, you know, to, to use Pimp's verse and, and his music. And shout out to my business partner, Mr. Jose, who has the classic album 21 Front Street, and Sin, who has multiple albums, Boulevard Records and Bear, for allowing that. I love that song. <laughs> And also recently, you actually just came off a uh, off a uh, full four city tour for that song as well. I was wondering if you could actually tell our listeners a bit more about this tour. And of course, do you actually have any up and coming uh, show dates so our listeners can actually come out and see you perform live in person? I did. I I, I just came off of a tour, you know, from that song, and I also did one. Um, it was last year, uh, before the end of the year, I've been uh, pushing and promoting and grinding this song like crazy, and, and it's a blessing everywhere that I've gotten to go because of this song. Um, I got back last week from Ohio. We went, in, uh, we went to Ohio, and we actually ran into that snowstorm, you know. We Texas, so we weren't used to that at all. But, you know, thank God we got there safely. We were a little late getting there, but we got there safely. So um, I went to I went to Austin, and then I went to Corpus Christi, and I went to Ohio. Um, and I have some more shows coming up. I'll be in Virginia. I think it's it's either April or March. Um, but I'll, I'll be in Virginia. And um, we're steady adding on more dates because that we also plan on coming out there too to Canada. That's one thing you know that that we don't mind doing. We don't mind you know getting on the road, doing shows and, and grinding. I, I love my city, but uh, it's time to get outside of my city and, and you know go to other places and and grind and promote and hustle. And I love it, though. I love meeting new people. I love networking. And, you know, uh, shout out to our business partners, Moth Enterprise and Accessories by Kendra Kadar, um, because they're with me everywhere I go. You know, I'm not the only female. Well, I'm the only female, so that's why they're with me everywhere I go. But um, I love it. I love traveling and networking and meeting new people. And we're steady adding more dates on, on the tour. And also as well, immediately following this interview right here on the FM dial, I'm going to be playing one of your most recent songs titled Ten Toes featuring Retro the Project Boy and King uh, Marino. I was wondering if you can actually tell our listeners a bit, a bit more about this song if they haven't already heard it. That way they can wrap their heads around it when they do hear it here live on the FM dial here momentarily. Okay, so shout out to them because... They're actually um, in North Carolina. 
So, um, shout out to them. They hit me up. Um, Retro hit me up. You know, he found me on Instagram. And that's another thing about me. You know, I'm, I, I love what I do. I'm a humble person. If you talk to me, I'm going to talk back. And he messaged me, and he was like, hey, you know, I heard your song, Curse for the Stones, and I, I think it's dope. And I said, you know, I thank you. You know, I appreciate it. And he said, I would love to collab with you. I said, absolutely. So he said, you know, I'm going to send you um, some music, and you pick, you know, whichever track you feel like, you know, you would like to write to. And I said, okay, so I picked the track. And I went to the studio, and I dropped the um, dropped my verse, and I sent it back to him, and um, I said, it's called Ten Toes. I said, you know, if you want to do the hook, you know, you can. I said, it, it is your song. So I wasn't sure, you know, if you wanted me to do the hook or not. And he was like, no, I, I got the hook. We'll do the hook. So, you know, I sent it to him. He hit me back the next day, and he said, this, I got it done. And he sent it to me, and I said, wow, oh, my God. I, I said, that's amazing. That, that song's amazing. I love that song. I, I love that song. Um, I, it, just, it just felt like, you know, sometimes you just got to get some shit off your chest. And I felt like we did that with that song. If you're going through any kind of thing or you feeling this type of way or, and like I said in my verse, I said, um, I peel my, I peel my pen, you know, to clear my head and, and which I do. That's what takes me away. This music shit. I love it. So that, that song happened really fast, but it, I love it. And it sounds good. But I have to ask, what is next for yourself, Lady Lunatic? Is there anything we happen to miss during this interview? Anything else you do do still want to talk about or promote? Well, we still got you here live on the Canadian FM dial this evening. Um, next is more shows, and I'm actually in the studio now working on a new album. So uh, um, I'm still, you know, um, I'm not, I, you know what, this is my first love. This music is my first love. So um, next is I'm working on a new album, and I'm going to do more shows. I feel like I wanted, you know, when I came back, because I had stopped for a minute when I lost, you know, my mentor, uh, Homer. But when I came back in it, I was like, okay, I got to, you know, keep his name alive because he's the reason why people know my name. So I said, I have to keep his name alive. So that's when I started, you know, rapping again and doing music again. So um, I'm not I'm not done with it yet. So I'm still going to do some more music. I got another album coming out and more shows coming up. I'm going to be making my way up to Canada soon. You can bet that. We're going to be taking a trip up there soon. And also, lady, this is a time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give, like, shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. But most of all, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything Lady Lunatic if they're not already doing so. Okay. Um, they can look me up on uh, on Instagram, Lady Lunatic 210. I'm on YouTube, Lady Lunatic uh, Facebook, um, Lady Lunatic, and S.A. Trill, which is the name of our um, company. Um, and I want to give a shout-out to my city, you know, San Antonio. And I get so much love and support, not from not just from my city, but from a lot of people in all of the places that I've gone to. And I really appreciate that. You know, my family, my friends, my business partners, uh, extra management, Suzette, uh, Sins of a Father, Moth Enterprise. Um, I, we just appreciate all the love. We'll have, uh, I have, my video is actually, it'll be dropping soon for Personal Stone. And we're going to have a documentary coming out that explains, it goes into detail more about the whole relationship with, um, 
Boulevard Records and Finn and Mr. Jose and me and UGK and Pimp C. So we have a lot of stuff coming up. And, and thank you. Like, I appreciate you for this opportunity. I got to say, having you, me on here. You were most certainly welcome, lady. I got to say, it definitely was an honor to actually welcome Texas Finest here on the radio station Airwaves this evening. I got to say, it definitely was, it was an absolute honor. And I got to say, hopefully we can actually do this again sometime soon. Oh, absolutely. You can count on that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I would love to. But I got to say, lady, thank you so much for just giving us a bit of your time here this evening and sliding into the 97.7 FM airwaves this evening. It definitely was an honor and most definitely a privilege. I got to say, definitely have yourself a wonderful night, and we most definitely, uh, most definitely shall talk soon. Thank you. Thank you. You too.